Do, do I have a clicker? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Jacob Sannon. I am a CPA. And today, we're going to be talking about taxes. Going to try not to bore you guys to death here. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I did play college ball at University of Idaho, where I also got my master's in accountancy, and um, also gradu graduated top of my class, summa cum laude. Um, <laughs> So here goes uh, my family. I have three sisters, one brother, and then a dog named Simba. So the one in the middle, that's my little sister, not my wife. <laughs> um, and then my grandma's right there. She kind of raised me while my mom was working for the most part. Um, so a little bit about my company. I started in about 2019 when I started my career in public accounting, kind of started with uh, clients on the side, and then um, always had a passion to really um, get more involved with business owners one-on-one. -on -one. So that really led me to kind of start my own pr uh, practice. Um, I run a fully remote practice, so I'm able to meet clients where they are um, on, their, on their side of town, do virtual meetings. Um, also have clients in multiple states. And then um, currently right now, my, I have two departments. It's the tax planning and preparation, which we're, talking, we're going to talk about today. And then also um, CFO services, which is, consists of KPIs, uh, forecast, budgeting for business owners that want a better grasp of their numbers. Um, so a little bit about taxes now. So when you think of wealth, I think of it at, into th and put it into three buckets. You have make money, which most of you guys know how to do, um, multiply money, which is typically done through investing, and then you have managed money. Now in the management money bucket, the big, a big part of managing money is understanding your taxes. Um, so a big part of understanding taxes is, is understanding the difference between what a marginal tax rate is and what your effective tax rate is. What the marginal tax rate is, is the government, the, the bracket that you're in based off of the government, but the effective tax rate is the actual rate that you pay um, after tax planning. So, in this chart, you see a history of taxes um, dating all the way back to 1913. What's crazy about this chart is about right around the 1950s, um, about 90% um, was the highest marginal tax rate around that time. Imagine not having a tax planner during that time period. Um, but I did a little bit more research on that, and it was like uh, a very small portion of uh, the, the economy or people paid 90% uh, tax rate. But currently today, the highest tax margin is about 40.8%. Um, and that's after the 3.8 investment uh, tax for high income earners. So my job as a CPA is to really help um, business owners understand how they could decrease that if they are in that high, that high tax bracket. So um, when you think of your taxes, I think of it, you, you really have to consider two levels. You have the business level and then you have the individual level. And a good tax planner will consider both of both both during the tax plan. So you have to figure out what your goals are for your business and on what your personal goals are in your personal life as well. So things like what are your retirement planning thing, goals? What do you plan on do um, to kind of help your children? Those are all things that we kind of consider when we do a tax plan. Um, so there's three phases of a tax plan. First, we First, you, um, when clients come in, you come in, and then we analyze your situation, which is kind of what we just discussed. And then um, second, we, we actually plan. And that's kind of where we kind of show business owners how we could decrease their tax rate. And then last, we, we implement with the, with the clients. Well, a plan without implementation is worthless, and there's so many steps that you have to make sure that you're doing in order to stay compliant with the tax codes. Um, so in, here's a case study here. So in this case study, we have about 100K gross, just to keep it simple. Um, and basically, we have different scenarios. First scenario is an LLC slash partnership with little to no tax planning. Then we have an S corporation with little tax planning. And then we have two, two other scenarios with more tax planning. And what, you, what I want to point out here is the marginal rate and effective tax rate in each one of these brackets. You could kind of see. It goes all the way from 21.87 percent because the, the biggest part about that is self-employment taxes. As an LLC member, um, you're going to be subject to self-employment taxes. So if you did, if you weren't aware of that, you're paying 15.3 percent of taxes that could potentially be avoided through an S corporation. Um, so lastly, here when you in the S corp that uh, S corp in retirement, that's essentially 
um, when you're considering the actual gross income that the business owner is making, um, that's the, the, in this case scenario, in this case scenario, 2.59% would be a way to significant to get significantly um, decrease their taxes, just looking based off the marginal and the effective tax rate. Um, so if, if you guys don't already know what your marginal tax rate is, um, it's very important to know what your marginal tax rate is and what your effective tax rate that you're actually paying. And the cool thing about this study is this is, this is before any expenses, this is before any deductions on the business level. So here go some key tax mistakes that I often see. People think LLCs are created to save in taxes. LLCs aren't created for, to save in taxes. It's created for, for, to save you on a liability to, from a liabilities perspective, and that's what you go to your attorneys for. Um, getting a large refund isn't a good thing. That's an a, a interest-free loan that you're giving to the IRS. <laughs> um, and then lastly here, um, single-member LLCs typically file um, on, on uh, Schedule C, which has a double tax or double audit rate. So typically my clients, I, I, re I strongly recommend not to file on Schedule C. So that's kind of, um, that's everything. Thank you.